Manson had uh, a little scheme called creepy crawlers. He'd send people in to move furniture around. Is that all a figment of somebody's imagination so far, or is that, or, or is there any truth to that? Tell me, Charles. I don't know. It's a fairy. It's worse than a fairy tale. It's a fairy tale. It's uh, it's it's a comedy. It's a comedy tragedy uh, opera that uh, was played uh, in the early morning. Come on, Charles. It was office, sickening. Off the space shuttle. You know. Well, what? that's what the DA gave you for reality. Okay. He stood in the courtroom and said. This man did this, and this man did that, and you all believed him. He said, this man did that. And I said, Your Honor, may I speak? And he said, No, you can't speak. I said, My Honor, I got a voice. Let me talk. He said, No, sit down. Shut up. Then he handcuffed me, take me to the back, whip my... What are you going to do? I come out and sit down, and I ain't going to get whipped again. Didn't uh, you stand up in that courtroom? Uh, and, sure, I stood and up. And by the way, by the, by the way, let me just I go back. I felt the re repercussions in no, the back oh, of it. Oh, okay, but yeah. you, you say the whole thing's a fairy tale. You say the whole thing is make-believe. Yeah, that's his helter-skelter. It wasn't uh -huh. mine. Uh -huh. The body of Sharon Tate is make-believe. Uh, that's make-believe make, that's make make to, yeah. make to the people that went in there and did what they did. Mm -hmm. And who were those people? You those, know who, you the, know, yeah. you, but you know who they were. Sure I know who they, they were. They were with you at the Spawn Ranch. They were part yeah. of this thing called, if not the Manson family or the Manson cult, the, the Manson Ranch. Call it what so you will. So then, what? And Tex Watson testified in a court of law that you told him, go to the house that uh, Terry Melcher used to live in and kill those people in a most gruesome way. A man that was once your associate said that of you, and now you sit here and say that's not true, that's all make-believe? You got a stone wall there, won't you take it down a little bit? Look here, I'll explain something to you. Uh, Tex took the witness stand, and this is record, and he said, I don't know whether I'm Charlie Manson or my mother. Tex didn't have his own mind one way or the other. He was balanced back and forwards because I had already took his mind in another game down the road that I was playing with some Hell's Angels that you don't know nothing about, and you probably never will know nothing about it because you would have to know those people to get in that thought, see? But there's different colors on different people's backs doing different things. It's a different world. I love the world I live in, too, just like Regan loves the world he lives in. You love the world you live in. <laughs> Most assuredly, it's me. You yeah. love all the pain that you've caused people, all oh. the anguish you've caused Oh, I don't know pain. I don't know pain. I have no depth of pain. I have no depth of suffering. I don't know ridicule. I don't know all the bad things. I haven't been punished by you all my life since I was 10 years old. I've been in every reform school you got across the country and used to lay down and have to get my ass whipped till I couldn't walk. Tell me about some pain. And that's yeah. our fault. That's all no, those people No, no fault. Make strong, good pain. Understand pain. Not bad. Pain's not bad. It's good. It teaches you things. It teaches you things. Like when you put your hand in fire, ow, you know not to do that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, I understand that. But how come you didn't That's learn... That's the reason I never stick my hand in fire. Oh, but uh, excuse me, you've got put, been putting your hand in the fire since you were a little boy. I have. By, you just told me a couple of minutes ago that out of 47 years, you've spent 34 yeah. of them behind bars. Now, yeah. if that isn't keeping putting your hand in the fire, yeah. I don't know what is. What year was that? It's, uh, it, the year is not important. Mm -hmm. What's important is you just say that you learn by pain not to experience again. Don't put your hand back in the fire. Yeah. Why you've been in and out of prisons for the last, uh, for 34 of your 47 years? You uh, call that normal behavior, Charles? Is that something that you're no, proud of? I mean, no, never. Well, I never thought I was normal. Never tried to be normal. Normal runs in a little rut down there. I don't know nothing about being normal. I've been in jail all my life, man. I've lived on a handball court. This guy raised me up. All the men in the joint raised me up, told me what to do, what was right and wrong, told me when to sit down, stand up. I just did everything I was told. You know, and I got to the end of it, and I just turned around and said, wow, fuck. All right, now that's hard. You know, and what? then I went outside, and all these little kids got a hold of me and said, we ain't going to stop the Vietnam War, and we want to do this. What? It was a war. I don't know what's happening. I've been in jail all my life, man. I never went to vocational. You ever see me in vocational training, rehabilitation? Never play no rehabilitation. I sweep the floor in the kitchen, go out and play handball. I'm still 10 years old in your world. Your world, I'm still a kid. I'm not going to grow up. I'm not going to go to college. How old are you in your world? Uh, forever. Since the breakfast. I can't remember what I don't know that what that means. Now. Come on, off the space shuttle, Charles. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. off the space shuttle. Now. How old are you in your world? How old am I? I'm as old as my mother told me. <laughs> How's that? Let your mother. Tell me about your mother. What did your mother tell you? My mother told me when she worked on death row and they took that dude in to hang him and his head popped off and went down them 13 stairs and rolled over by her. It scared the <laughs> You know, so I said, wow, that sure is a far-out trip, Mom. 
So then when I got up on death row in cell 13 for nine counts of murder, 1969, and I looked at, at her fears, that guy's head popping off that hangman's noose, and I said to myself, uh, my goodness, what the hell am I doing here? I didn't want to come here. I didn't break the law. The judge knew that. But the people didn't want to hear it. The judge knew it. He washed his hands. He said, I know it, but what can I do? People want this. The judge never said that. Yeah. The judge never said That's that. That's what Older said. No, the judge didn't say that. He got off and shook the hands, didn't he? The judge did not say that he washed his hands. He's a flying Charles. tiger, man, for Madame Chiang Kai-shek. I just wrote judge, a letter. Judge, the judge didn't say that you were innocent, Charles. Innocent? Let's go back to your mother. What innocent? Else? What wait else? a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's get back to that word, innocent. You're so white and pure? The judge didn't say you were innocent. Are you innocent? Innocent of what? Well, that's what I'm saying. None of us are innocent. Yeah, just because you're convicted in a courtroom doesn't mean you're guilty of something. What does mean you're guilty? Well, you know you're guilty. And how do you feel about yourself? Tell me about it. Feel, I feel pretty good. Let me take you back to your mom. Take me back to old. What else did she talk to you about besides the fellow whose head popped off? The head popped off, yeah. She was living in the Blue Moon Cafe and she'd hit a dude in the head with, a, with one of them bottles of uh, a Jim Beam whiskey. She tried to hustle a few dollars on the corner, but there wasn't no money. So when she jammed this whiskey bottle upside that clown's head, he went down. She took the bread, come up and got me, and we left, went to Indiana. When you were a boy, did you love your mother? Uh, I didn't know what that was. Did you respect your mother? How did you uh, feel about you? How do you feel about your mom right now? If your mother, yeah. uh, I don't know if she's alive, Charles, or not. Yeah, you don't. Huh? Do you? Mm. Let's see. Alive now. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I mean, if she could be watching this she right could now, be watching this what would you say to her, Charles? Oh, well, yeah, what, what would you I say to mom? Her? I'd say. You sure went through a whole lot of changes to get me as far as you did. And you did a damn good job with the help of my grandma. My grandma was a mountain girl <laughs> from Kentucky, up in the mountains. And uh, she never did drink or smoke or cuss or lie. She used to cook for the Salvation Army, and she was a human being. Good one. I go to church down there and sweep the floor for her. Well, how were you in school? I hear that you weren't too good, but maybe I heard one. Uh It depends on which school. I did very well in reform school. Yeah. <laughs> I did good in, uh, in uh, every place that uh, I was ever told to do good in. As much as I was allowed to do, you know, a lot of times good for some might not be the same for others. And sometimes it kind of bumps heads, but when it does, then um, I just chew on my pipe and think about it and do the best I can. Mm -hmm, but you dealt, you dealt the hand down in L.A. You and that press, you and that uh, uh, L.A. Times, you dealt the hand. You put me on Life magazine, had me convicted before I walked in the courtroom. You had what people wanted to buy. When they wanted to buy it, they didn't give a damn if they had to convict the district attorney. They had to convict the whole building to get that dollar bill going there. They had big bucks going there. They made 27 million, thousand, hundred billion. I'm bumming 10, 15 dollars for my friend here.